I don't think the debate on gun control is over like some people do. They see record gun sales month after month after month for the last two years. And they think that obviously there isn't space or interest in the public square for more gun control. Personally, and I'd like for all of you guys to tell me what you think in the notes below, I'm not so sure that what we're seeing as far as record sales of guns means the end of gun control politics. It's not that I'm not optimistic. It's that there's always gonna be a place that the anti-gunners think they can fill by inserting their rhetoric into the conversation. But it's hard to ignore that a public full-throated debate on gun control is not something the anti-gun politicians want to have right now. That's why a couple weeks ago, a senator tried to pass universal background checks by sneaking it through the Senate. He knew his colleagues didn't want to be on the record for supporting this. So while I don't think gun control and the politics around it are officially dead in America, I do think the conversation has changed a little for the better. And a little, not necessarily for the worse, but certainly different than what it was before. So here's five reasons why I think it's actually getting better. First, more Americans with more guns exercising the Second Amendment is objectively a good thing if they know what the Second Amendment means. Number two, a lot of Americans recently came to the conclusion that when they feel the need to protect themselves that a firearm is a rational choice. It doesn't matter what their politics are. Many, many people came to the same conclusion. Firearms, legally protected by the Second Amendment, can be a good thing when times get tough. With that in mind, try getting some anti-gun politician to tell that new gun owner that they shouldn't be able to protect themselves. It just doesn't land the same way it used to. And here's my number three reason why I think things are getting better for gun owners. And this one is sort of anecdotal, but people were looking around at their government representatives and felt they no longer supported the American people's interests. When you feel that you can no longer trust elected representatives or for the police to respond to crimes and the courts to do the most basic thing like protect your life, liberty, and property, then you're gonna take those responsibilities into your own hands. A lot of people for too many years felt that they didn't need to be responsible for themselves, they can just rely on the system. I don't think they believe that anymore. And number four, yeah, it actually goes back to the incredible number of firearms sold in the last two years. It does make it easier for us to tell the anti-gunners that the American people do not support gun control anymore. Just look at the numbers. The people voted with their dollars. Little else in this world is as definitive as what somebody does with their hard-earned money. And in this environment, a lot of people are spending top dollar on even basic firearms and accessories. And rounding this out with number five, my hope is that with the millions and millions of new gun owners, it's gonna create space for new companies to grow as a result of the new consumer base. More businesses hiring more people in a space related to firearms and the Second Amendment is objectively a good thing. It also makes it that much harder for a senator or a congressman to squash our rights if there's gonna be a negative effect on employment. Now, you'll notice I said it makes it harder, not impossible. All right, so now for the flip side of that list. Here's four reasons why I don't think the debate on gun control is over, but it's merely changed. Number one, let's just be honest. A lot of people who bought guns are just not Second Amendment purists. I recognize that even among legacy gun owners, there were a lot of disagreements about the Second Amendment and where the line should be drawn. But now we have new gun owners who look at the issue very differently than many of us might. I don't want to be cynical, and I actually want to welcome these new people, but I can anticipate hearing a lot of, I support the Second Amendment. In fact, I just bought a gun recently. But just having a gun doesn't make you an authority on the Second Amendment or the purposes behind it. And people without guns can be completely no compromise on the Second Amendment as well. Just like I'm not a journalist, but I think there's no exceptions to the First Amendment. We can no longer just say these anti-gunners just don't like guns and just don't want guns. Now we're contending with people who potentially do own guns for personal protection. So for all the wrong reasons, this might give them credibility with the anti-gun crowd in the same way that a former ATF agent who wants to restrict our rights is an attractive spokesman for gun control groups. And here's my number two reason why I think the surge in firearm sales doesn't mean the end of gun control politics. Building coalitions around the Second Amendment has always been on the table for gun owners of America. 
So for example, we've worked with other gun groups and women's groups to defeat the Violence Against Women Act, which is a bill that GOA and women's groups really don't like. But this new dynamic might allow anti-gun groups who want reasonable gun control to partner with new gun owners who are not as committed to the premises of the Second Amendment. At a moment in time when there are more and more voices using the same language as the GOA motto, no compromise, we are now potentially opened up to a new dynamic created by an unlikely coalition. I want these new gun owners to join GOA and fight for our rights, but I don't want to expand the gun rights coalition if it means compromise is on the table. And allowing new people to join your movement and change your fundamental principles doesn't expand and strengthen you. It actually fractures your movement. And now my number three point, and this one shouldn't surprise anybody, there's just too much money to be made in the gun control movement. Billionaire moguls or hedge funds and Hollywood, just to name a few, are all willing to dump truckloads of money into the anti-gun movement. There's a lot of talking heads, journalists, and activist groups willing to take that money. Not only that, but their views also line up very nicely with the corporate media. So their positions will get plenty of positive on air time at the big networks. All this creates an echo chamber where some might be fooled into thinking there's actually a groundswell of support for gun control. And last, number four. Even though I mentioned a little bit ago that Americans have decided this question by voting with their dollars, how much of that is gonna convince a committed anti-gunner? How often do numbers and data ever change a committed anti-gunner's mind? Here's just one example. About 90% of all mass shootings happen in a gun-free zone. So logic would tell you that you need to get rid of gun-free zones but an anti-gunner would never support that. So I'm ultimately very white-pilled about the future of gun rights in this country. I mean, when it comes to the anti-gunner spokesman, they are not sending their best. We can and will win this. We just need to recognize how the dynamics may have changed in the last 24 months.